Welcome to Some Guys Garage. Today, Project Wheeled RC Tank Part 2. So we're going to pick up where we left off last time. If you haven't seen the first part, go watch that. We were having an issue with the RC receivers and the motor drivers not working well together. And so we're going to take a closer look at that. Then we're going to try some new motor drivers and see if we can get all of the electronics working correctly today. Okay, we're set up here with uh, some test equipment. We have a power supply that's feeding power into the radio receiver. And we have a oscilloscope hooked up to the two outputs for channel one and two on the radio receiver. And if we take a closer look here, we can see the PWM signal from the RC receiver. So when we take the radio and apply channel one, you can see the length of the pulse for channel one gets longer and shorter. And similarly with channel two, we get the, the purple one gets longer and shorter as well. And if they both get longer together, um, they actually are relative to each other. Uh, so we can see that going back and forth a few times. So just to make that a bit clearer, we've zoomed in and split the two traces. And we can see as we change channel one and channel two a little clearer now, how the two uh, interact with each other. And zooming back out now, we can see the approximately 60 pulses per second on each channel and that corresponds to the tone that we were hearing when we were running the motors uh, with this PWM signal. So in comparison with the motor driver hooked up with the same horizontal scaling we can see just how much faster the pulse rate is compared to what we're getting out of the RC receiver. So to solve this problem, we've had to go get two new motor drivers. These ones actually accept an RC-based signal into them, unlike the old ones. These motor drivers are also a little bit bigger, so they handle up to 45 volts, and that means we could run two batteries in series to get a little bit more performance out of the motors. So now we're just going to swap out the motor drivers, get everything mounted, and see how things work. Alright, so we have everything rewired. As you can see, I've got the batteries hooked up and the motors are not turning right now, which is a good thing because before if we had any power hooked up with the old motor drivers and the radio receiver on, we would get that buzz. But now everything's working as it should be. So I can take the remote here. So I have my remote controller and if I give it throttle, the motors come on, same with reverse and even steering, so steering is also working. Since we're doing a tank, there's a thing called mixed mode steering that you need to enable. Both these boards and the controller does it, so as it stands right now, I have the controller set up to do it. So what actually ends up happening now is when I pull the throttle, both motors go forward. If I push the throttle, both go back, and if I turn, they go in opposite directions. And so that gives us the tank style steering or skid steering that you would expect. Another advantage of these motor drivers is they actually power the RC receiver. So previously I had been using the bench power supply and was planning to just use a 9 volt battery. But now with the new motor drivers, they'll actually power the RC receiver directly. So it just saves a little bit of complexity in the setup. Now that we're wired, let's take a walk through what we have here. The two sides are identical, so there's two parallel setups, one driving each motor. The battery is feeding into two terminal blocks one for positive, one for negative. The positive side is feeding into the fuse block and the fuse block is splitting out in two directions. One, it's coming over to these uh, voltage cutoff switches and the other side is going back into the terminal block and then back out to this relay. So what we're doing is using the voltage cutoff switches to control the relay and that's what actually will end up powering the motor controllers down here at the other end. This way, if the battery voltage gets too low, the voltage cutoff switch will turn off and that will in turn turn off the relay and cut power to the motor drivers. The motor drivers are getting signal from the RC receiver 
and then they use the power they're receiving from the relay and back out to the motors. And they're the ones that actually control the motor based on the RC signal. So it is a pretty straightforward setup, just a little extra complexity because of the relay and voltage cutoff just to protect the batteries. So I decided to take the thermal camera out and see how hot everything was getting while running just with no load. Obviously this will be different once there's a load on it and when the RC is complete, but interesting to see at this stage that the motors and the drivers are pretty cool. Most of the heat's coming from the voltage cutoffs and the batteries themselves are actually quite cool. Let's take a look at how much current this draws. We have the power wire into the motor driver clamped and we're reading just under 0.1 amps. And if we fire up the motor here to full speed, uh, idle load would be about 1.2, 1.3 amps. We're just gonna switch this over to max so we can track whatever the max value is and reset it here. So, Taking a look at max value when we start up, we got about 2.7 there, still about 2.7. Back and forth a little, we're up to about 3.4 amps. So not a lot of draw, but that's to be expected without any load on the motors right now. Let's have a look at the RPM we're getting out of these motors on uh, roughly 20 volts. Looks to be 2400, 2430 thereabouts. So pretty quick, but uh, not too crazy to gear down. And with those tests done, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.